In John 9, we meet a man who's blind from birth, but Jesus heals him. In the Gospel of John, there are seven signs or seven great miracles, and this is, um, well, it's the sixth one, except for, of course, we're not counting the great resurrection miracle. I guess you could say that would be an eighth one. But this is the sixth of the seven. And, um, well, we're going to get to that. Jesus has quite a lot of things to say about being blind <laughs> in this chapter. Let's read. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, This man didn't sin, nor did his parents, but that the works of God might be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, anointed the blind man's eyes with the mud, and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went away, washed and came back seeing. The neighbours, therefore, and those who saw that he was blind before said, Isn't this he who sat and begged? Others were saying, It is he. Still others were saying, He looks like him. He said, I am he. They, therefore, were asking him, How were your eyes opened? He answered, A man called Jesus made mud, anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed, and I received sight. Then they asked him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him who had been blind to the Pharisees. It was a Sabbath <laughs> when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Again, therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said to them, I, He put mud on my eyes, I washed, and I see. Some, therefore, of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others said, how could a man who is a sinner do such signs? So there was division among them. Therefore they asked the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews therefore didn't believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of him who had received his sight and asked him, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? How then can he see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we don't know, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. He is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if any man would confess him as Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So, they called the man who was blind a second time and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He therefore answered, I don't know if he is a sinner. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I can see. <laughs> they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, but you didn't listen. Do you want to hear it again? You, do you want to become his disciples, do you? They insulted him and said, You are his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered them, How amazing! You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, he listens to him. Since the world began, it has never been heard of that anyone opened the eyes of someone born blind, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in your sin, and you teach us, and they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who speaks with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment that those who don't see may see and those who see may be blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, are we blind also? 
Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. Another example of Jesus talking about sight in a completely different way to the way that the Pharisees were talking about sight. It's a story of this man who was blind from birth and um, there's a bit of an interesting debate about the first part because the disciples say um, to Jesus, um, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? So they assume he's blind because of a, a sin of some type. Jesus says this man didn't sin nor his parents, but that the works of God might be revealed in him. Jesus isn't saying the man's not a sinner or that he's perfect. What, he, what he's saying is that he's not blind because of a certain sin and he's not blind because of his parents committing a certain sin. But if they are sinners, yes. And um, what Jesus is, by, I, I guess a, a way of saying that in modern language is um, the world we're in is a broken world and stuff happens. Some people are born with, um, you know, they're just born not being able to see or not being able to hear. Helen Keller, she couldn't see or hear. Um, you know, it, sometimes things happen in this world. Sometimes there's natural disasters. The world's a broken world. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can point the finger at someone and say, that's your fault. You're blind because you're a sinner. On the other hand, we're all sinners and we all need repentance and we all need grace. But Jesus said that this man was blind, that the works of God might be revealed in him. Now, some people thought, some um, experts think, that God purposely made this guy blind so that years later, Jesus could just come along and be glorified by healing him. You know, what a hero Jesus is. He's healed him and now he can get glory. Some others think that's awfully cruel of God to make someone be blind for all their lifetime just so that Jesus could have a miracle like this. Um, what I think is that all of us are blind. As the chapter goes on, it explains, it's very apparent Jesus is talking about sight and being blind at his level, not at the human level. And all of us were born blind. You know, you can look at this guy and you can say, um, oh, you know, it's not fair that God made him be blind. No, all of us were born blind. All of us were born into sin. All of us need a savior and the Lord is glorified by giving all of us sight. As it gets down to the very end of this chapter, um, this man becomes a believer in the Lord and worships him. He sees two ways. He sees because his physical eyes have been opened, but then he sees and he has, he has this type of sight given to him that Jesus is talking about. But then the, the Pharisees say, um, are we also blind? Jesus says, if you were blind, um, you would have no sin. But because you say we see, your sin remains. They claim to have the truth. They claim to see because they've taken the high ground, they're blind. Jesus doesn't show them anything. They don't get healed. They don't get given of sight. And he says a few verses earlier that for judgment I came into the world that those who don't see may see and those who see may become blind. He's not talking about the physical miracle of the man. He's talking about salvation. He's talking about spiritual light. In um, one of the really big prayers you can pray, is for the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Paul teaches us this prayer in Ephesians. That is a prayer for spiritual sight. Lord, open our eyes, help us to see, help us to understand, help us to know your ways. Well, for those who are humble, the Lord will give 
sight and be glorified just like he did with his man. But for those who are proud and arrogant, who think they know better, they become blind, but the funny thing about it is they don't even know that they are. And that's the, bit, the worst tragedy of all. At least this man born blind knew he was blind, but there are people who are blind and they don't know they are. Father, I ask you to help us to see. Open our eyes that we might, might have, Lord, give us understanding. May the word of the truth, the word of truth of the Lord live in us. May it be a living word. Father, may we come, may we see the love of God more and more. Open the eyes of our heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.